Back to Brian's Beat. If you're spending less than $20 a month for prescription drugs, great. If not, then our monthly fee RX service might be a good option for you. Check for yourself at monthlyfeerx.com. Definitely. Well, of course, when you say Jackson 5, I'm not thinking the, the Osmonds. Oh, my goodness. Hour two of Brian's Beat. Glad to have you on board today. And I see you there, and I'm going to get to you in just a second. Monthly VRX brings us the Brian's Beat quote of the day. The quote coming from the Bambino. Babe Ruth. Never let the fear of striking out get in your way. And I can't. I guess I could throw that out to Kamala Harris because I I disagree with her economic agenda or at least what I've seen and heard about this agenda. But I got to give her credit. She is definitely trying to separate who she is from not only Joe Biden, but Donald Trump. So I'll, I'll give her. I'll give her that. Nothing else, please. Nothing else coming from me. 67 degrees in Rochester, 64 in Westport, 65 in New Bedford. And I want to thank South Coast Towing for allowing you to listen to this program today on the WBSM app. All right, let's get to your calls. 508-996-0500. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Bry. How are you today? Bry is winging and what? Wh- hey, you know this. This is the meaning of is day. This, is this day. This this is the day. This is the day. This is the day that produced winging and wanging. Oh boy, I don't know. I don't know if I want to know the backstory. Bill Clinton. <laughs> oh, oh, well, when he was talking know. about Monica Lewinsky. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Well, you know, I just wanted to first, uh, and and I say it not in the way you would think, touch on your first subject about women wanting to be topless in society. And uh, back in 1990, I was over in the Philippines and uh, went to uh, a beach uh, in this island called Boracay, which is the most beautiful place in the world you could imagine. And... First day getting up at like 10 and heading to the beach, I started looking around and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's a, it's a, everybody, all the girls are topless. And you know, for about 30 seconds, it was like, wow. And then you start going, I can't really look at them because that's a cre- total creep factor. And then you just sort of settle in and go back to your beach day and it just is what it is. Um, so to me, I don't really care. I, it's it's you know, not you. <laughs> uh, not me. Yeah. I don't really care, but. Anyway, um, so but you know, I, I think the question is, what do you think the legislature will do? No, they won't let it happen. Yeah, and you know, you're Although talking it, about at the beach. You're you're right. Yeah, everybody's trying to get an an even tan, so to speak. But this this rule, what 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 this woman wants is, you could be walking down Main Street. And and be topless. If a guy can do it, then a woman should be able to do it. And I'm telling you, if you're driving a car, you, you, chances are you're going to take that double take, boom, crash. Well, let's face it. If you, you know, if you ever see Surge, the Sturgis rally, which just ended last week, is the big uh, motorcycle rally in South Dakota, uh, mostly Harley Davidsons. And there are a lot of women that, that will um, they'll go topless <clears throat> or shirtless, and then they paint you know, basically paint in a bikini top or whatever would paint. And, you know, that's, who cares? You know, I mean, it doesn't really matter, I guess, but it's up to the individual. Well, I anyway, think it is up to the individual, but, you know, we've got this woman who's going to be up in Boston today. You know, weather permitting, I would, I would guess. <laughs> Can you imagine the umbrellas? <laughs> <laughs> well... 
look, let's, uh, we're all over 60, right, Brian? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> Aren't you over 60? <laughs> of course I am. You gotta be. Yeah, <laughs> but I, but I act like a young kid. Well, that's okay. <laughs> uh, that's okay. Well, I wanted to um, speak with you about, uh, you, I mean, you're a libertarian, right? To the best of my know, that's something else I'm going to bring up. But yes, I am registered. You, you got to you got to love this package that uh, Kamala Harris put out yesterday. Well, look, like but, I said, I give her credit for you know putting that foot in the water. But I I hate everything, or at least everything that I've seen. I, I despise. You know, our our economy is like a, a, a car that's been running really poorly, and Kamala Harris comes along and says. Look, I've got this great idea, you know, instead of putting gas in the, the tank, let's put oil in the tank because for to make gasoline, you actually have to do the work. But oil's the same thing, but we don't have to work as hard. We're just going to pour the oil in and then the car runs poorly again or dies completely. Um, that's pretty much like our economy, which is, you know, when they did the the um, the Inflation Reduction Act, the IRA, that put $2.7 trillion of just printed money into the system with no earning behind it. Nobody earned it. It was just printed. And that took a bad um, inflationary period and drove it into hyperdrive. And and she, she was the deciding vote. So when I see stuff like, you know, we're going to give twenty five thousand dollars to new home buyers, up to a million home buyers. But we're going to check your. You have to have had two years of of, of good payment for your landlord. I'm like, I'm like when you look at all of these programs, you go, there's thousands of new employees in the federal government to 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 justify every program that has to be monitored by the central government. And and when you hire federal employees. They're they're not they're, you know that's money out of the tax pocket. <laughs> it's not money out of the the private sector. Um, that is it. So and I, you know, as I as I have stated before, so now you've got somebody who has to monitor to make sure that all of these um, people have had good credit for two years. Then you've got to have somebody monitor that person. Both of them need to be paid by somebody. The person that's paying needs to be monitored to make sure that they're not cooking the books. Oh, I mean, this is if you think the federal government is big right now, what do you think it's going to be after all of this? Well, let's, uh, if the federal government got bigger, but for some reason what they were doing getting bigger meant that that it, that the country was going to uh, have more opportunity and it was going to stimulate the economy by um, having private sector growth and that growth generates income and all this. But the fact is, is that I don't trust anyone in the central government. And I use central government because it's the communist style government to, 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 that can manage it. I mean, has Kamala Harris hasn't ever run a business. She's never um, generated a payroll for anybody. She's been really poor at managing people. The 45 people that quit, that were her assistants, that were her staff over the last three and a half years, they quit for, for a basic management reason. They produced reams of information for her that she needed to read so that she was prepped for her job, right? And the, 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 then she would go in front of the, she wouldn't do any of the study on all the materials they provided. These are like Harvard, Yale level people that provided material for her. She would go in front of the cameras and she would fail or she would see the news reports that she failed. And then she'd come back to her staff and yell at them and said they did a crappy job. <laughs> that is like management 101 fail, that zero leadership. So how is she going to do in front of Putin? Is going to get a, a really big red reset button like Hillary Clinton? I mean, she, I mean, look, she's good. Look, I have nothing or nothing. I, I don't care about Kamala Harris. She, she's 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 attained the level she has for whatever reason. She's the ultimate in the Peter principle. You know what the Peter principle is? Person rises to the level of incompetence. Yes. <laughs> and I, I hope the best for her. I don't. I have no. Well, you know what? You but, might you might be hoping for the next president of the United States. I know you don't mean it that way, but um, right. you you just might be doing that. Hey, thanks for the call. I'm, I'm as, you bet. Got it. Five zero eight nine nine six zero five hundred is how you can. Join us on the program. I've got a guest coming up after this call. 508-996-0500. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. 
Yeah, there is no doubt in my mind that the big issue in this election is going to be inflation. It's It affects directly uh, just about every person in this country. But what people are overlooking is the fact that this is a worldwide problem. This is not just a, just in the United States. Western Europe, Japan, uh, Australia, most of the world is in an inflationary spiral right now. And in my opinion, people are blaming the wrong thing here. I, I still think that when the oil companies started uh, uh, seeing their bottom line go down the tubes during the COVID crisis because people weren't going anywhere, they cut back on production and raised the price of diesel fuel and kicked off this whole, it was like a chain reaction. They, they kicked off this, everything moves by diesel truck, about 90% of everything in the world. I, I, I won't argue that, but put yourself in the oil companies, you know, those, those head honchos position. Are they supposed to keep on producing the oil that nobody is using? No, I, no, I, I understand that they 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 had to cut down on production. I understand that. Okay, and but, and they did. I mean, but you're you're pointing your finger at them. Well, because they didn't have to raise the price as radically as they did. But they it, always it, do, about, don't they? To me, it's about human greed. We're talking about people who have huge mansions in the Hamptons with uh, yachts, and uh, we're not talking about Joe uh, Six Pack out here, you know. These guys have got more than enough money. They had plenty of money. They were still ma- they were still producing uh, dividends for this for their stockholders. It, 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 they they could have weathered the storm. They, they, there's no reason why they had to jack everything up the way they did. So I I I, I hear in that complaint all the time. Yeah. Their job, if you're the CEO, your job, you are hired to make money for the stockholders. Now, the stockholders are, are billionaires, millionaires, but they're also companies that, that invest their pension plans in, in petroleum companies. And, and those people are barely eking out their, uh, their own uh, retirement off that same money. So that's the job. If, if they don't do their job, they're, they're in trouble. They can go to jail. Well, there is such a thing as a greater good, you know. And, well, and the but great, you, then, then you want to be privately held as opposed to a, a publicly traded stock company. Yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, uh, I, like, it's just the way they're blaming this all on uh, the government or the politicians. There is such a thing as uh, excessive human greed here that sparks problems. I mean, don't forget in 1929... Uh, the capitalist system collapsed. I'm sorry, I wasn't here, so no. I guess I will forget it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the capitalist system collapsed worldwide. It wasn't just in the United States. The Great Depression was a worldwide event. I mean, you know. <laughs> so I, I look at it that way, but I, I believe the Great Depression in the United States <laughs> kept on going. It lingered until 1941. Right at right until after the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor. Well, that's because in Europe, uh, people like Adolf Hitler, Mussolini put their economies on a war footing, and people went back to work. I mean, uh, you know, uh, when Adolf Hitler took over in 1932, it was like 70 percent unemployment rate in Germany. That's one of the reasons why he gained power. Correct. So, <laughs> that, so I guess we should do that. We should well, um, we should <laughs> let let the the national statehood, the conservatives take over and, and control everything. And if we I need didn't to say kick I had people, an answer. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say there I had you an go. Answer. All right, man. Thanks for the call. I do appreciate it. Okay, bye. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a break right now. I've got a guest that's gonna come on. His name is Chris Thrasher. Chris and I have known each other for a couple of years, and he used to be the head of the Libertarian State Party. Hey, so I was waking up yesterday morning and I had an email from uh, the guy that was the past president of the Libertarian Association of Massachusetts. And it was an announcement from Chris Thrasher that he is actually running for state rep. Now, the first thing that went through my head was, you know, I want to congratulate him 
Then I found out he's not running as a libertarian, and I said, oh, gee, I wonder why. So I, I picked up the phone a little bit later on in the day, and I gave him a call. What happened during the call, what transpired, is the reason that I have Chris coming on today. It, it has been a huge subject around here. Now, as I mentioned, he's running for state rep. I'm not doing an interview about somebody who's running for state rep. I'm doing an interview with a person who lives in Westport, who lives right near the water in Westport and has stuff coming up basically in his backyard. Chris, good morning and and welcome to the program. Good morning, Brian. Thank you for having me on. Most no, appreciate it. No problem. So, uh, first of all, congratulations. You, you, you are running for office. I'm not going to be overly thrilled you're not running as a libertarian, but um, be that as it may. <laughs> well, as an, you know, as an unenrolled voter, uh, I'm running on the running, going to be running a write-in candidacy in the Republican primary. And if I get 150 write-in votes, then I will be the Republican candidate for uh, the 8th Bristol District House race coming up. Uh, it's an open seat. Uh, but uh, moving on uh, from from there, uh, the conversation we had yesterday is certainly more focused on the the boondoggle that is offshore wind. Well, and, so and what did you see you, in your backyard, man? Well, I, I live, uh, you know, way up on, on Drift Road here, way up the, the Westport River, and, and seen little bits and pieces of the wind turbine that broke uh, a few few weeks ago uh, wash up. I've seen uh, fiberglass shards. I've also heard from people up and down the coast, up and down the river, uh, of the same things washing up in their backyards. And we had a select board meeting a couple uh, er, la- earlier this week, and someone actually brought uh, a couple, actually three bags, trash bags full of debris from this this offshore wind turbine. You got to be and, kidding uh, me! No, no, and it and it looks pretty, uh, you know, it looks pretty gnarly up close. It really does. And, and you know, when I hear oh, it's non toxic, I just you know, depending on uh, what's your definition of non toxic is, it, I it, guess. Thank but, you. Uh, exactly. I'm not going to go over there and chew it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And when you have, you know, sharp fiberglass shards uh, uh, f- floating there in, in, in the water and you, you got to you gotta wonder what's, what's that doing to our, uh, our seafood, or to our, our fisheries. It's just, it's very sad. And, and I got to tell you, as someone who at first was very, very excited for the prospect of offshore wind, both for its perceived environmental benefits, but also for what it could do for our economy in this area. I used to be completely on board. And I got to tell you what I feel like, feel like now is that we've been sold a bill of goods because the two things that, that were, were told to us that offshore wind would actually be benefiting, uh, very clearly it's, it's actually the exact opposite. Hmm. Uh, you had between the, the tourism industries being affected, Nantucket had to close their beaches for a couple of days because of this. Uh, and, and on top of that, the, the, the environmental benefits, well, very clearly what's happening uh, right now in the waters is, is not benefiting our environment. Well, you, 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 let, let, the, let's, uh, let's, let's piece this together just a little bit. There were pieces that came ashore by Elephant Rock. Now, I used to live over by Elephant Rock back when I lived in, in Westport. And that is, you have to go through Rhode Island to get back into Massachusetts, that, that part of Westport. Where you are, you're on Drift Road, which is the other part of the Westport River. So I would call it the east part of Westport River. This is getting closer and closer to Dartmouth because Drift Road is not that far from from um, Reed Road and then, you know, uh, what is it, County or Old County or whatever the name of that street is that takes you from from Westport into Dartmouth. Indeed, it, and this is just, you know, I, we haven't had the huge pieces here, uh, but still, you know, I've, I've seen enough and... and but, but the, the 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 things that I'm seeing from other people up and down up and down the river, and I guess technically I, we're on the 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 uh, we're on the east yeah the east east branch of the uh, the Westport River, but I, it's it is it's amazing 
uh, just how much actually has washed up, especially down down near uh, near uh, the Horseneck Beach and, and East Beach down there. There's there's been a been a, a ton. And, and what's you know, it look like? Vineyard wind. Well, it it looks it looks like uh, a lot of it's it's fiberglass. The fiberglass shards are probably the most. The, it, probably the most uh, the most challenging aspect of it because they can be, you know, almost microscopic or all the way up to uh, dagger like, uh, really? you know, and 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 it, yeah, and it, and it gets to a point where it blends in with the sand and you just don't know what it's going to, you know, you don't know how much is actually out there. So if, uh, if but, you're telling me this, and and I I haven't seen any, I would certainly you know like to see what it looks like. It, are you safe to walk barefoot on the beach? Are you safe to swim in the water? I haven't heard of any of the beaches being closed, but here you are, Drift Road, Elephant Rock. I mean, there there are a couple of beaches in between. There's there's quite a few, and and you know it's not it, this isn't just happening in Westport. It's happening up and down the South Coast. It's it's happening it's happening in Nantucket, and and you know this this is a question certainly that has to be asked. And and a, you know I've I've got a lot of pushback saying that that this is kind of an alarmist. Uh, response to a, a single isolated incident, and I and I'll tell you that that doesn't really hold a lot of water with me because it, it seems that what's being built off of our coast is a very different technology than what's been used somewhat successfully in Europe. Uh, the, these turbines and these these installations are uh, much much larger than what's been used, and when you start digging and you find out that not only have have these technologies not been been used before but they they they're basically using the vineyard pro, the vineyard wind project and, and some of these other uh atlantic offshore wind projects uh they're using us as guinea pigs to see if the technology is going to work yeah I, and, I would tend to agree with you on that and uh to your point earlier this week the state has decided that New Bedford is going to be able to expand uh, the marine terminal for more offshore wind projects. So no matter what is happening to the one turbine and who knows what might happen to any of the others, the work continues. It's like nothing, nothing bad's going on. Let's keep working, folks. Yeah, and you got to ask yourself why when New Bedford is the, is the single most valuable fishing port in the country uh why here and i gotta tell you when you when you go deeper and deeper the more information i find out the angrier i get you start following the money you start questioning uh the, the technology you start questioning where the uh you know wh wh where the the offshore wind companies are, are coming from you start questioning their legal structures and you realize that all of these are are joint venture llc's that have very limited liability beyond a one one company uh and then you start questioning these host agreements that are being made with with towns up and down the coast and and you see how these these host agreements are are negotiated behind closed doors and they come out at the very end uh with very little public input already ready to go and be rubber stamped and then you see when communities like Nantucket and Barnstable are trying to figure out how to get out of these host agreements because they are chock full of pitfalls for the towns and also limit the offshore wind company's liability in instances such just just like what's just happened. And it's just, you know, it's, it's a terrifying prospect. And I got to tell you, I feel like I was duped because we were sold a bill of goods. We were sold a technology that was supposedly going to help our environment and help our, our economy. And very clearly, the actual effects it's having having on our area are the exact opposite. Well, and, let me tap is, into Chris Thrasher, the attorney, then um, you, you brought up a few things. What can the you's and me's do in order to, if, if not stop all of this, at least get it to the point where it is safer for us to live with these turbines out in the water and hopefully make it cheaper? Because if it's not saving us any money, why are we going down this particular road? 
Well, you know, and I, I, I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to put my attorney hat on this, on this one, but I can, I can certainly put, put my community activist hat on, and I can tell you that the biggest thing we have to do is we have to get the word out. We have to have these conversations and make sure that they, they happen out in the open and not behind closed doors with town administrators and with, and with, with town, uh, with, with select boards. They, they have to be out in the open. Uh, and, and also we need the town officials to be willing to stand up to the state and not let these, these, host agreements and these projects get railroaded through without proper due diligence, without proper, uh, w- w- without properly taking a look of, of what is actually happening out in our waters. And, and, and it's also, it, it really does require the conversations to try and wake people up to what, uh, what is happening on the ground as opposed to what's being promised. Because if you take the industry's word for it, it looks like a great deal. It looks like something that's going to benefit us. And and when you compare that to what's actually happening, like I said, it's, it, it it ends up being downright terrifying. And we need people to to get informed and, and stand up and be heard on this. You know, I, I think you're absolutely right. This is when we go to town meetings, uh, city council meetings, et cetera, especially the city of New Bedford. Chris, I want to thank you. Thank you so much for your time coming on and, and the time that you spent with me yesterday talking about this and a few other subjects and down the road. Uh, I, I should also mention uh, that Chris Thrasher is also a member of the Westport School Committee, and we can talk about some of the things dealing with, with campaign, uh, not campaign, but school funding formulas that you think are amiss at, at another time. Sounds good to me. And if if, uh, if anybody has, has some more or wants to get some more information on, on my run, my website's votethrasher.org. We'll have much more coming there in the next few days. We just announced. Uh, very excited for to uh, to talk about these issues down the road. And, and thank you so much for having me on, Brian. Chris, no problem at all. I really appreciate you, man. I, I miss you. I miss you. Chris Thrasher. He is running. He, he's running for the seat that um, Paul Schmidt is vacating. So there is a part of New Bedford involved in, I'm not sure that any of Dartmouth is involved. I, I, I'm, I'd have to double check that, but it's, it's primarily a, a Westport, a Westport uh, seat. 508-996-0500. Look, he, he is absolutely right. You need to go out and get involved. I've, I've heard the conversation uh, on my shows, on on Chris's shows, on, on Barry's show, in reference to what's going on with offshore wind. But it's one thing when we when we huddle here on the radio and we talk about it. Basically, that's what it is. You know, we we are doing a bull session, but we have to go to some of these meetings. I don't know how much the city council is really willing to put forward. But I'll tell you what, every one of those city councilors are up for re-election next year in the year 2025. And if they don't listen to your concerns, you have the opportunity to vote the bums out, as, as we like to say. I'm not trying to say that any of them are a bum. Well, like, no, I'm not. But this is a huge issue. And it is going to take a couple of things. One, that they need to listen. And number two, they need to sit down with the mayor and come up with a plan. Because I think Chris is absolutely right. If if on the local level, there is not a plan... And not just a plan to make some money, get get the hotels getting some money and um, some of the people along the waterfront some money. At, at what cost? At what cost? So in, until you can figure that out, until you have until you become a stakeholder. And as a taxpayer, you are a stakeholder in what goes on in the city as I am a stakeholder in what goes on in Dartmouth, as as Chris Thrasher is in what goes on in Westport. 508-996-0500. Hello. Yeah, good morning, Brian. Good morning, Brian. How you doing? Winging, wanging. Uh, 
And I want to make a connection uh, to these wind turbines, the wind turbine industry. Uh, you, you know, I have Kamala Harris. She's on her campaign trail talking about billionaires and millionaires have to pay taxes and all this other stuff. But the Democratic Party's in bed with billionaires and millionaires and this project offshore wind. And, uh, you know, this company is an LLC, a limited liability corporation. And if if we get uh, hurricanes like Ernesto and these other uh, hurricanes that uh, are uh, we're prone to, could you imagine the, the, the debris field and the, the amount of dev- environmental uh, impact and devastation that, that that would create? If they topple? If they topple and you have the uh, debris field for miles because of uh, the wind surge and the... Uh, the, w- the crashing uh, waves. The, well, the I, amount think of we the, are, the... I think we are already having crashing waves. There have been riptides over at Horseneck to the point that 80 times, and maybe more now, 80 times as of last week, that the people had to be plucked out of the water over there. So I, I think anything can happen can happen as far as that's concerned. I don't think you need to worry about a, a hurricane actually hitting. No, I'm talking about the more more you'd have more debris. Well, that's and, what I'm getting uh, at. Yeah, I don't think you have impact. to. I don't think you have to worry about the hurricane actually hitting to get to get stuff falling apart over there. Right, and as far as Kamala Harris, uh, you know, uh, telling you that you, the government's going to give you twenty five thousand dollars if you're first time home buying a home, and six thousand dollars per child, and she's going to. Uh, uh, put limits on the supermarkets or the the price that she feels is price gouging because of inflation and this environment that they've created over the decades of Republicans and Democrats. General Douglas MacArthur gave his farewell address in Congress in 1951, and he told Americans then, and it's so true today, that communism poses a large threat to people, uh, freedom-loving people and freedom uh, and free nations. And that's where we are today. You have a communist that's running around telling you she's going to give you everything. Basically lying like Vladimir Lenin and uh, Fidel Castro and Hugo Chavez and uh, Nicolas Maduro. All lies. And guess what? And when they get into power, they get it all. They get mansions. They get the best food. They get entertainment while everybody else is starving. Can you believe in Venezuela they were even eating zoo animals? That's what we want here. We want all of these supermarkets closing, mass starvation, because that's what Kamala see, I, is I, telling you. See, I don't know that all of the supermarkets are going to close. I think what you'll find, it, you know, the, the scenario that somebody uh, brought up earlier would be that uh, Market Basket would take over the stop and shops and Shaw's. And so you wouldn't all have to go to one particular store. Now, here's the thing. And, you know, I this is what I recommend. This this is what the libertarian and Brian suggest. If you are so worried about price gouging and whatnot, start growing some vegetables in your backyard or maybe you don't have space. Grow some in your house. So you can lower your grocery bill. Now, I don't know if there's price gouging going on or not. I don't know how I would detect price gouging. But if I can't tell you, how is Kamala Harris going to tell you? Well, they've, uh, for all the spending that we've, uh, we've talked about this before, all of this uh, spend, that $38 trillion debt, we're, we're weakening our dollars. That's why we have inflation. So they created it, and they're going to create another problem, which is food shortages, uh, supply chain issues, and many people are going to go without. And some have made the point that the prices it would even have an opposite, opposite effect. You have less food on, on the shelves. It's going to cost more money to buy it. So it, this is another big lie by the communist Democrats. And what are the Republicans doing about it? Well, they ain't gonna. They don't have a solution either because they created this problem. Hmm. Think about so, it. Well, no, I, I I am thinking about it. I've been I've been thinking about it before you knew me. That stated, 
This is, I've been saying, this is where we're coming. Uh, you, you've got restaurants in New Bedford closing. You've got restaurants around the country closing. You've got other stores closing down. Major chains are saying that they can no longer stay open. Right. Where, you know where, where are we going to go from here? At what particular time are some of the people going to start to figure this out? Right. Let me just say my final point. In 1912... Uh, you had a, the, the dollar was backed by a, a 20th ounce of gold. So if you have that dollar in your pocket in 1912, that would give you 11 loaves of bread. And then when Nixon came into office, he took the, the dollar off the gold standard and it became a petrodollar. And in 1971, you can get six loaves of bread. Today, uh, the cheapest bread I can get is white bread and market basket for a dollar fifty. But if you want to get a pepperidge farm, like Barry says, that's his preference, is close to $4.00. So let me just take that into account and in how far we've gone down uh, economically. Sign of the times, man. Yeah, Sign Brian. Of the time. You know what? You, I, I hate to sound like a broken record, but I need to. You keep on electing the same folks in. Look what you're getting. The same results. Same results. Or, or worse. Worse. I think, yeah, right, worse, right. But you know something, uh, Brian, we're just uh, we're just spilling negativity and people don't want to hear the truth. We're pragmatists. They just want to hear the good stuff. You know, they might be living high today, but tomorrow they're going to be hurting if you don't pay attention. Gotcha. Thanks. I do appreciate it. 508-996-0500. Let's see. Opportunity economy. That's what Kamala Harris calls it. She's going to create an opportunity economy. Here it is, or here's a part of it. First ever federal ban on grocery price gouging. Now, she didn't state exactly what grocery price gouging is. But I think you and I both know that the prices at the grocery stores have gone up tremendously over the past couple of years. Let's take three years, 2021, to where we are today. And when those prices went up, have you noticed the prices coming down? Have you noticed the prices coming down? I haven't. So if the prices haven't come down, why? if Kamala Harris, if Joe Biden... If the Republican Congress, if they're all feeling the same way about this, why aren't they doing something about it now instead of waiting, you know, instead of some kind of campaign promise that you know is going to go down the New Delhi dumper? This is what bothers me about this. She can't do anything about it. Oh, she's going to get the Federal Trade Commission. But wait a minute. The Federal Trade Commission, aren't they, isn't uh, the grocery stores, aren't they under... The um, Food and Drug Administration? How do you expect this to work, President Harris? I don't know. Oh, well, what else is she going to do? Provide $6,000 per child to families for the first year of the child's life. Now, is that supposed to... Is that supposed to... Make more people expand families here in the United States? Does that apply to to folks that come into the United States already pregnant? Does it apply to folks that come into the United States illegally and then get pregnant for the first time? We are going down fast. I applaud Kamala Harris for having the guts to basically introduce this piece of trash. She is definitely putting her line in the sand. This is where we stand, and this is where the other folks stand. I am not with either, as in saying that I'm not voting for either. You already know that. But... I can only suggest if you don't like the plan, don't vote for the person with the plan. 
However, I could say equally about the other guy, the other big guy, the two big cojones in, in this race. 508-996-0500 to get on to the program. Hello. If you don't Turn your radio off. You want to turn your radio off, please? That way, when you turn your radio off, we can hear what you're saying instead of what I'm saying. Good morning. Good morning. Um, when you hire a contractor, don't you look for references? Most of the time, yes. All right. We're hiring a president. Now, Trump has a track record. I'm in business. My business was out of sight when Trump was in. And dropped down to probably about 25, 20% of what I used to do. I was buying gas at Joe's Gas on Nash Road for $1.82 a gallon. So you can't compare the two. One is a, has no idea, and the other one is a businessman, plus he's a billionaire. He doesn't take a pay, and he's just a very successful man and knows how business runs. You have to have... A businessman in there, not a liar. I mean, a lawyer. Well, but you are you 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 brought it up. You had liar, and you had that with Donald Trump too. I I think what look, there, there are there are a lot of things. You know, you're 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 you're, tr- you're trying to be pragmatic about it, but there are a lot of people that just don't like Donald Trump. So what? Oh, so oh what? Well, no, but you see, you you say so what? They do care. I care. Listen, I like a person that tells it like it is. I don't like somebody that dances and lies. Well, and I'm, I'm sorry. I, if you don't want somebody that lies, then you don't want to vote for Donald Trump because he's been caught in numerous. So don't, don't try to see. You know, I, think about what you're saying. You just said it, man. 508-996-05. Look, if you don't care that Donald Trump has done certain things that's you but there are lots of people out there who do and you can't say you don't care about how they care 508-996-0500 hello 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 hi i thought i was um, cut off anyway hi brian hi brian um, i i'm glad you're on because i'm so sick of it i feel like not listening to the station anymore oh, but anyway well, now why because of all these people with Trump, I can't stand oh, it. Oh, okay, I got you. So anyhow, listen, I this this price gouging has been going on since COVID, and it's all BS. Because you know, once prices go up, they're not going to come down. They use that for an excuse. They're greedy, and and then Trump. So, but you got to be specific. Who's greedy? The people that are uh, putting the prices up. They're okay, gouging all right. Us. So second of all, and then that's all I want to say. The second of all thing I want to say is that Trump says that he's going to do all these things. He's got everybody hoodwinked. He says he's going to drill, baby, drill. We're going to um, get the immigrants out. We're going to shut the border, and we're going to um, we're going to cut electric and power prices down. All your bills are going to get cut down to half of what you're paying now, which I doubt very much. And then he says, if it don't work, you can say you voted for me. (laughs) <laughs> I'm like, what? That's what he says. I hear it on the radio. You know, that's it. He's not going to be able to do all that stuff. It's BS. You know, right? I, I, I would say this, and Kamala Harris is not going to be able to do all that she is uh, trumping out there to say that, no pun intended, uh, that she's going to do. That's what we hear from each and every candidate as they try to woo votes uh, one way or the other. Um it, by now, we should we should know better. Yeah, I, I listen to Ken Pittman and you and um, Tim, but I'm going to shut all the other ones off because it just agitates me, and I don't need that. I need to have be positive and have a good day. Hmm. I oh, hate to hear that, but thank you. Okay, have a good day. I, I, I'll be listening you do to too. Ken Pittman. I thank appreciate it. Ken just walked through the door, so he'll be on in a couple of minutes. So people can say, well, good, we got rid of Brian, now we got Ken coming in. And look, my guess is, without asking him, that Ken feels the same way that I do when it comes to the proposals from Kamala Harris, these economic proposals. 
However, I haven't heard anything from the other big cojona about how he's going to change things, how he's going to make things work. So, and by the way, I do care. You know, Trump lied on his taxes, the fraud that led into that, lied about pay, 